great friend of the program, our assistant general manager, Elliot Wolf, in studio. Elliot, thank you so much for taking the time. What is what is the the days that follow draft weekend? What is that like for you? Uh, you know, it's pretty good. Got to go to the dentist today. That's always very exciting. Uh, <laughs> How'd no, that go? Did it go good? I think it went okay. Good review. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, got a good review. Um, no, it's a, it's a little bit slower, uh, which is nice. It gives you a chance to kind of sit back and breathe and kind of evaluate the roster and see, you know, where are some areas that we, we were successful in adding depth and where are some areas that we're still going to keep targeting. So. When you come out of the draft like this, obviously no first-round pick. It probably seemed like an eternity. You guys had to wait a full day to even be able to draft, but are still able to get talent like Greedy Williams. We know you love Taki Taki. We'll talk about him. Mac Wilson falling in the fifth round. How did you guys feel you were able to do, even though you didn't have a first-round pick, even though I would say you did, and his name is Odell Beckham Jr.? Yeah, we, we feel good about it. Um, I always like to put that with a caveat. I always feel good after the draft at this point. Always have. This is my... I think 16th year. I've always felt good at this point. Everyone's real excited. There's optimism on all 32 teams right now. But that being said, some of the guys we added uh, are awesome. We're, we're very excited about, about the depth. We're very excited about the competition we've created. And uh, anytime you can add to areas that you think you maybe need a little bit, that's helpful as well. So it, it seemed that you know you guys wanted to add on the defensive side, especially the kind of the back seven of that defense, two linebackers, a corner, and a safety with your first four picks. How do you feel about the depth at those spots? And you mentioned earlier we're looking and seeing where we still maybe need to add depth, and if you can, what positions would those be? Yeah, I mean we feel good. Uh, you know, every, everyone's talking about greedy, but greedy is going to have a, a heck of a, a heck of a time trying to beat out Terrence Mitchell and, and T.J. Carey. I mean, especially Terrence, like where he's come from in his career what he's had to fight through. It's, it's going to be a heck of a battle this camp. Um, at linebacker, obviously, Christian Kirksey's an established veteran. Joe Schobert's a year off the Pro Bowl. So those guys are going to be fighting as well. So it, it's really, it's really going to be exciting to see who, who rises to the top at the end of this thing. I was watching the, the press conferences that you guys did, and you know I'm no FBI body language expert. When I saw you talk about Taki Taki, though, it was very obvious that this was somebody who you absolutely loved. And I'll admit, admit I didn't watch a whole lot of BYU football uh, this past fall, but what I did do is go look on the YouTube and go, well, we got a heat-seeking missile is what we got. Um, when, did you, when did you first become aware of him? When did you decide that this was somebody that if we had the opportunity we would definitely want? And how do you see him transitioning to the NFL? Yeah, so I had the good fortune of, of scouting him live. I did the Utah swing this year, BYU, Utah, Utah State. Um, and Utah is kind of the crown jewel. They had a, you know, a lot of guys get drafted. Uh, I think they had uh, five guys get drafted this year. So you know about those guys going in there. Everyone's like, yeah, you know, you might as well stop, stop by BYU. And, you know, I start watching the film and, I think it was the Wisconsin game was the second game of the year. And and this guy's just out there destroying people. Um, And I was like, huh, I don't think this is going to be a wasted trip at all. And uh, to just kind of fast forward, because he was an unknown because he played defensive end last year, and now he's transitioning to linebacker. So people didn't know about him a lot earlier in the season. So as the season progressed, he just continued to get better and get better. And uh, we're excited about what he can do. Incredible growth as a person, too, to go from, you know, where at the beginning of his career there's some some discipline stuff, and then to go to being a captain at BYU, where their standard for that is a little different than everybody else's. Just tremendous personal growth, apparently, with him as well that happened. Yeah, absolutely. It it was cool. To a man, all all the people you talk to, the academic people, the coaches, the pro liaison, uh, to a man, this was all like the guy that they were just gushing about, the growth that he had made in his life. A lot of times, you know, there's the media draft guides that are out there that kind of formulate the masses opinions about players. And Taki Taki was not a guy that the media thought was sure. going to go in the third round. I know you guys were thrilled to get him. And as I did some digging around afterwards, I found that there were multiple teams that were planning to take him in the third round that thought that was their steal of the draft. And you right. guys stole him. Did, did anybody give you any like, hey, how'd you get, come on, man, give me my Taki. Yeah, it was it was one of those picks you make where. Everyone really liked the guy, but for some reason they just didn't seem to have him quite as high. Um, the draft in the last, I'll say, 10 years has really become a lot more about where you can get a guy versus, you know, because ev- everyone's worried about what their local media is going to say and national <laughs> media. Everyone's worried about that stuff, but we felt like we got a steal at, at the 80th pick with him. 
John Dorsey it doesn't strike me as a person who's worried about, by the no, way, what the media is going to say yeah, about his picks. It. No, I wouldn't suggest. <laughs> the only thing he's worried about is making sure there's soup in the cafeteria. That's right. And we've done that. And for we did him. that for him. We so, did that for him. So Don't tell him that, though. We're saving that. We're in saving case, that nugget. In case yeah. we annoy him at some point in the future that we can let him know that. Yeah, he's, he's a big soup guy. Yeah. He does like yeah. his, he had he a chili. Soup. He's got a real, oh, yeah. a real a method. A method to the chili, to say the least. Um, overall, the, the one thing that strikes me um, in, in being around the building for the last year is uh, it's a real family group that you guys have and a real brotherhood of those of you guys when you think about you and Zoe and John uh, and the rest of your team even. And it seems like you guys are on the same page every single thing. And I'm sure there's disagreements, but it appears that it's a unity thing and you guys really love each other, like each other in a real partnership. How does that come about? And, and is it as special as it appears from the outside? I think the it, it is definitely as special as it appears from the outside. And that being said, want to wish uh, – Get well soon. Alonzo yes. uh, had his uh, knee replaced this week. A uh, long time coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully he's back with us shortly. But uh, I, w- I would just say the passion that we all, we all care about this team. We all want to win. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Um, we all have a mutual respect. And, you know, there's decisions that not all of us agree with at all times. But guess what? It's a Cleveland Browns decision, and we're behind it 100%. And I think you also see kind of the collegiality, and John Dorsey seems to thrive on it. There was the video that came out where he calls Chris Ballard while he's on the clock, and yeah. he just hangs up on him and is like, I'm busy, and tells the story about how he did that. And I think it goes back. They used to do that to John Schneider in Seattle as well. What's it like being with, you know, you guys have that repartee as well, and how fun is it to see that and see really how it spreads around the league? Because I don't think people realize – that it is kind of a fraternity in your, you know, the talent evaluation sure. well, business. Sure. I, I think the biggest thing is, I mean, you got to have fun. You got to have fun doing this. We we spend countless hours in a dark room watching football and, and in you, silence. In silence, and you develop these relationships with guys on other teams. You know, I was doing the same thing to the Green Bay guys when they were on the clock. You know, because they had, <laughs> they had two ones. So uh, it's it, it's just kind of how we were raised doing that to each other. And is that what you say John Dorsey thrives on busting chops? And uh, we were just talking about seeing him walking before you came on. He said to save it for this with walking around at the combine, like just crushing everybody in his path, like just dominating. Yeah, I mean, there's times where he probably does it too much, but you know, <laughs> turn the switch off once in a while. No, he's a he's a he's a he's a genius. Uh, it's awesome to work for him. Um, just learning from him and the way he he deals with people and the way he attacks his job and really just. His love for the job. I mean, he loves every. He loves the hard stuff. He loves the easy stuff. It's really cool to watch. Elliot, we um, on the day after the Beckham trade, we requested from uh, the, the equipment guys if we could get a couple of Dorsey sweatshirts to wear on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, of course, he walked by and said, "You guys look like a couple of idiots." But the other part of it was. <laughs> It was like wearing a fleece ski jacket. I could not believe how like hot it was. Mail. It was so hot. We were dripping sweat. And then we had Joe Thomas in here last week on draft, and he was wearing one. He said he dropped five pounds wearing that thing. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. He's Have you got, ever put he, one on? Yeah, it's terrible. It's the most <laughs> unbreathable yeah. fabric yeah, known to man. Yeah, it's unbreathable. He had it custom ordered. I mean, it took Brad Mellon in the equipment room like months to get the exact right color and fiber and <laughs> print <laughs> tone. <laughs> And, you know, he, he pretends it's, like, not a thing. So we were – last summer in May, we, were, we went to an Indians game, and it's 82 degrees. Come on. And it's John and I, and he's, he's got the sweatshirt on, and he's got to be just dripping. Oh, my God, dying. And people keep coming up to him and asking him for autographs, and he's doing, playing dumb, like, oh, you know, I don't understand how these people recognize me. <laughs> and I'm looking at him like – Come on, man. You know exactly what you're doing. You're in your uniform. Yeah, you're in your brand. You got your Air yeah. Dorsey's. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. The Air Monarch Dorsey's. You got to love it. I can't believe it. he wore it with the humidity. It had to be 80%, 82 oh, it degrees. 80, and yeah. It just, yeah. I thought I was unwell by the end of the two hours. And when I took I it off, dizzy. it was like I was back in a whole new world. It was, I was literally it was dizzy amazing. coming out of it. I yeah. was absolutely dizzy coming out of it. Coming up this weekend, back to a little football rookie <laughs> mini cam coming up. First chance to really see these guys that you drafted. And uh, I think it's different, you know, for Browns fans. Typically, rookie mini camp is the opportunity to look at the guy that's supposed to be your savior. And we all believe hope that we've got that now in Baker Mayfield at the quarterback position. So when you see guys come in who are just supposed to be pieces on a team like you did year after year in Green Bay, what does rookie mini camp mean? under those circumstances, because we're unfamiliar with those circumstances. Yeah, I mean, you know, pieces on a team is kind of diminishing what they're going to do. Um, you know, it takes it takes 53 guys plus eight practice squad guys, and it takes the whole coaching staff. So really we're looking I for – I meant no disrespect. No, I, I, know, just, I, know, I know you, you yes. didn't mean that. But, uh, 
no, we're we're just excited. We're we're seeing how they fit in. We're seeing how they are as guys. You know, the for the tryout guys that come in, I think we have about thirty two tryout guys here. Um, their tryout really starts when they enter the building. You know, how they treat people. Um, you know, are they good with the support staff? Do they know what they're doing, or are they just happy to be here? Um, but with the draft picks, just just seeing how they move around and how they fit in, the coaches are gonna be throwing a lot at them, um, and and just really getting them ready for when the veterans are are here as well. Did you ever expect, because certainly we didn't, and of course we're just a couple of guys in this room, you guys are in the important room making decisions, that Mac Wilson would be available in the fifth round? I mean, that literally blew our minds. Yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. You know, I kind of thought when the draft started that he was going to be one of the top linebackers to go, um, and then he just, for whatever reason, just slid, and uh, we were really excited to be able to add him where we did. I was um, on... Same. Yeah, same. I was I was on in in Canton Saturday and uh, went to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Took my boys and there's there's a room you've been down there. The, mm-hmm. there there's a room there where they have all the uniforms and the like the most game worn stuff. And for years, I would take we would go down there. I love it down there. And we'd take the kids and we'd walk around. And um, there was never anything from our team that represented our team. And we were in there uh, Sunday Saturday. And there's the there's a Baker uh, Nick Chubb thing there that they have set up. Then there's a uh, – I looked around, and there's a, a jersey of Jarvis Landry, who has the most catches in the NFL in five years. And then there's a jersey of Odell Beckham Jr. And I think we're sitting in there with the boys, and they got their Baker stuff on. And I go – and I'm thinking, you guys did all that <laughs> in a year. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I'll do the victory lap for you because I know you guys – look, we got to prove it on the field, all of that. But it's a stunning collection of talent yes. that's taken place in a year. Yeah, we're, we're excited about it. Um, again, you know, we, we had seven wins last year. That's not good enough. Uh, we hope to have more this year, and, and you know anyone can make headlines in March and April, but the, the key is doing it when it really matters between those white lines. One other uh, thing that was down there was the bust of your father, <laughs> so, and he was here this week, and I saw him at lunch on, on Monday. What was that like to have your dad uh, you know, back in the room and, and you with him and him here this weekend? Uh, that, that was really special. I, I didn't think he was going to come and, and hang out like that, but uh, he was in there um, kind of just – you could tell he was just kind of reviewing our process and seeing seeing what it was all about, how it was similar or different from the way he did things for so many years. But it was it was really special just to have that moment with him. What did he think? Well, he'd be the first to tell you. He, you know, he, he went when he was the GM. He knew every player in the draft, every play, player in the league, wrote them all up. Um, now he feels like if he doesn't watch, you know, five game tapes on him, he doesn't want to comment one way or the other. So. Um, <laughs> He watched a few, uh, some game film on some of our guys uh, this week, uh, Greedy and Taki Taki, and uh, you know he liked them both. So that's a win. Yeah, that's a win. Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. Right. We'll <laughs> take it. We'll take it. Nice to see the Hoff down there. Did him? Did he and John have a pretty good back and forth? It would seem to me that they would. Yeah. So my 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 dad is a, a ball buster like John is. So <laughs> he he'll, he'll come in and be like, hey, let me ask you geniuses something, and it's. <laughs> Doesn't it matter if the guy can tackle, you know, stuff like that? Yeah. In, t- in today's football, it'll be like in today's football. Don't you want to have guys that run fast? You know, it's just, <laughs> of course. Yes. Yes, yeah, we yes, do. Yes, we do. Yes, thank we you. Do. So Thanks. fantastic. Very helpful. So fantastic. This is fun. Elliot, thank you so much for stopping yes, by. Yeah, no incredible Thanks draft. Love seeing you around. Love seeing your dad in and love seeing what you're doing with the franchise. It's incredible, man. Appreciate Thanks a lot. It. The great Elliot Wolf joining us here on CBD 850 WKNR.